Good morning, St. Peter's. My name is Patrick and it's lovely to see you if you're following online. This is a Sunday message for St. Peter's Badassey. And um, we're going to start by reading from John's Gospel. So if you turn in your Bibles to John chapter 13, verses 3 to 17, and I'll read for you. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel round his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realise now what I am doing. But later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who've had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he'd finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I've set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. This is the second message in a series of love in the Bible. Last week we looked at Jesus' new command, love one another as I have loved you. And this week... We are looking at loving like Jesus the servant. Loving like Jesus the servant. You know, John's Gospel is often called the beautiful gospel, the deep gospel which takes us into places that only are glimpsed in the others. And we'll see that in a few moments. You know, service in some countries is very important. In France, they say the restaurant business, for example, they say le client est roi. The customer is king. I wonder if you can remember a time when you've had fantastic service. A fantastic experience when you've been served by someone else. You know, when someone's gone above and beyond to make sure your needs are met. I wonder when service isn't great if you notice in a restaurant, in a hotel, a taxi, or wherever it is that you're being served. For me, when someone gives good service, I really notice. It's a thing of beauty. And I believe that for God, when we serve others, when we go out of our way to make people feel special by the way that we serve them, God is pleased. He's pleased because this is the way of God. This is the way of Jesus. You know, we all, we all need others to serve us at some point in our lives. Sometimes it's when we're weak or unwell that we really need the service of others. Uh, these times we really have to depend on others serving us just to have our basic needs met. I remember when I was studying theology, training to be a vicar, I went to South America to explore a placement at a church in Chile. While there, I realised that my return flight was I, I, was too late. I'd made a mistake uh, for an important essay I needed to hand in when the term started again. 
I tried everything to change my flight, but nothing worked. It would have cost more money than I had to fly home earlier. I was on the point of giving up when I went skiing outside of Santiago in the Andes, and I, I, um, I was high above the clouds, and I had a terrible fall. I was going too fast, and I, I took a big tumble, and I, uh, my skis stayed on, and it meant that I ripped my knee, uh, and, and my a ligament in my knee. It was a bit of a shock, a little bit messy. But the good news was now that I could fly home on insurance. Uh, it wasn't the way I planned to do things. But I remember the challenge of getting to the airport with my bags whilst on crutches and having to let everyone do everything for me as I couldn't help myself. I had to be put in a wheelchair to be um, pushed to get to the plane. I um, bypassed all the queues and I had this big... A case of Chilean wine, which I was carrying in the wheelchair. But the best thing was that I was sent home in business class. Um, you know, it was either that or three seats in economy where I could put my leg up, my injured leg. And Air France uh, business class is something else. It was a a fantastic experience and an air hostess had the job of looking after me and I even found myself sort of sort of imitating the, the subconsciously the, the man sitting next to me a Frenchman who was asking for champagne he said je veux bien du champagne, le champagne. he was sort of tasting as he was ordering it and you know, du foie gras and I found myself I found myself I was so enamored with the experience I found myself going yes some champagne and a foie gras. <laughs> um, I got carried away, being treated like a king. Uh, I never forget it. And, th- and then they, they took me in a wheelchair at Heathrow to to um, a taxi and back to Oxford's, Oxford, where some friends were waiting to help me. Gee, some had come to the airport to, to help me kindly. I mentioned this amazing experience of, of being served as for. Um, As for Jesus, being served by him um, and serving others are somehow deeply connected. Peter says to Jesus, you will never wash my feet. Jesus says, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Peter relents eventually when Jesus says, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. And for Jesus... This foot washing is not optional. He's both serving the disciples and showing them that he is the one who cleanses them. He's the one who cleans us. Not just our feet, but inside. A person who's had a bath needs only to wash his feet. He's talking about a deeper cleansing. Foot washing was important in a, in a culture of ritual cleansing. Jesus is with one act of service showing deep love, the love of a servant as he cleanses the disciples' feet. It's a reminder that he alone can cleanse us inside. He alone can forgive us our sins. Now in verse 3, before this remarkable passage, which is now so familiar to many of us, John writes something unusual to launch Jesus into this sequence of stripping off his outer clothes, getting down on his knees or on his haunches to wash his disciples' feet. What does John say about Jesus at this point? Verse 3. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he'd come from God and was returning to God. So he got up. What was the launch pad to show the disciples another way of leading and loving? Which the world had not really witnessed up to this point. John says that Jesus was utterly secure in his identity in God. He knew who he was. He knew what he'd come to do. And he knew where he was going. He was in the place of rest and peace. Not exhaustion. So he got up. 
serving for Jesus was not about proving anything. It was a revelation of who he truly is. Jesus serves out of this place of rest and understanding about his true identity. This is a clue for us why we are to serve others and how. You know, when we think of kings and queens, it's not the picture we tend to see. Of course, our queen in in England, the UK officially does enact something like this each year on Monday, Thursday, because she's a follower of Christ and she wants to share and live out this story. But imagine Vladimir Putin or Angela Merkel, Boris Johnson, acting like this in a cabinet meeting as a leadership lesson. It's not what we expect. It's fascinating uh, to me that John points out that as Jesus has nothing to prove, he goes lower. He puts himself amongst his followers as a servant. He shows them what it is to be like him. We need to go low. We need to humble ourselves and serve. It's the opposite of leaders who lord it over us and don't really care. Really, this is the only way that churches, the gathered people of God, can follow Jesus and become the community which is called to serve one another and those around us. I wonder what you did to serve those around you in the pandemic. A group of people at St Peter's Battersea, and a few of them did the lion's share, turned up every week to make meals for those who live across the road from the church in a residential home and and deliver them. And some others came and did all the cleaning and clearing up after the cooking. It was not a huge, it wasn't a huge operation, but it was significant. It's an act of service. It was a sign that we want to love our community through serving. And those people who served in this way were following in the footsteps of Jesus. In this winter, food poverty is expected to be very high. There's more homelessness, more unemployment. People are going to need some help in our community. What will our homeless shelter look like this winter for our community, our homeless community? What will those of us with jobs and wealth do to help those who are hurting around us, who are in need? This is something, if you're part of St Peter's, I urge you to pray about. When we serve others as Jesus showed the disciples, three important things are happening. Number one, first we're being obedient. We're simply doing what Jesus calls all his disciples to do. Whether it's literally foot washing or serving one another, we're obeying him. And this is part of becoming his disciple. Jesus says, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. John fourteen twenty one. Jesus says, if you hold to my teaching, then you really are my disciples. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. John eight thirty two. So obedience. Second, we're declaring God's kingdom has come through this new kind of love. Instead of demanding that my needs be met above all others, I'm curious to understand my brother's needs, my sister's needs, by serving others. My needs too are met. I wonder if you've ever been, as I have, to a a Cistercian or Benedictine monastery, perhaps for a a time of prayer or retreat. You can book in at these places. I'm not sure what it looks like in the pandemic, but in the pre-pandemic life, you could book in for a retreat for a few days. And at these meal times, uh, in with Benedictines, for example, they, they eat in silence and someone reads to them. Uh, and as you're not permitted to speak, you cannot easily ask someone to pass you the butter or the bread or the food you need. So instead, what you have to do is to offer food to your neighbour. You have to offer it to those around you. And that way, when everyone adopts this practice, everyone's needs are met. And it's a metaphor for serving in the church. Everyone must serve and everyone needs to be served at some point. Third, not only will we become more like Jesus, but we will see Jesus amongst us. When I serve you, 
I begin to see Christ in you. I treat you as if you were him. This happens uh, particularly when we see the homeless men and women in our homeless shelter. Jesus says, when you feed them, or when you fed them and clothed them, you were doing it for me. When we serve each other, the body of Christ becomes visible among us. Paul writes in his letter to the Corinthian church, when one part suffers, every part suffers with it. When one part rejoices, every part rejoices with it. He talks about the members of the body of Christ, the people of Christ's church. This is Jesus' vision for his church, that we all serve and are served. Finally, let me finish with this challenge and encouragement. Finally, sometimes recently, we found people resistant to serve in our church on Sundays. It may be good reasons for this. Perhaps people are fearful of serving. I don't know. Perhaps they're nervous, anxious about the pandemic and the virus. But we cannot be the exception to serving in the church of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, we will not really be the church family. Jesus calls us to be his family. He calls us to be his body. And we need everyone to serve here on the welcome team, leading prayers, doing the reading, being on the AV desk with the sound, serving drinks when refreshments are permitted again. We don't do that at the moment, of course. This is what it means to love like Jesus loves, to serve as Jesus serves. So I'd love you, if you're a member of this church, to pray about Jesus, where he's calling you to serve. Where would you enjoy? Where would you like to serve? Have you yet offered to be on welcome? If someone calls you, is in touch with you with a doodle to fill up, perhaps you might think what, what it is you want to do on Sundays. We really need everyone to step up. Uh, then we will see Jesus' love flowing amongst us. Then we'll become more like him. Then the body of Christ will begin to flow and people will notice. We notice and others notice that Christ is amongst us and his body is doing what it's meant to be. Serving one another and loving the way Jesus served. We are then transformed. We may not feel like serving all the time, but as we do, we begin to experience what it is to walk in the way of Jesus and gradually, imperceptibly, our lives are changed. It's beautiful and God is glorified. Loving like Jesus, that's the way he's called us to serve. Amen.